so much going on in a &E. You're gonna see so many patients, so many opportunities to take histories, do exams, like I feel so prepared now. If you just have a look at all the upsers that I've signed off, on this placement. I signed off six in my first like two shifts. Out of 10 upsers, I've signed off eight and I've done many of them multiple times. I want to go to um, that little chicken place that we used to go to when you lived in Peter. Sometimes people can bark demands at you or get that, get this or move out of the way. I can't help but sometimes feel like it bothers me sometimes. Sometimes take its toll on you having a full day of being told do this, do that, or just move out of the way. And you do feel like you are very inferior. And it is quite difficult, especially when you're, you know, a lot older, like I'm nearly 30, right? And welcome to another day in my life as a third year medical student. And today I've got a very busy day planned as I always do in third year. Lots and lots of things going on. We're starting with a clinical debrief, which is a two hour session with a GP with the other members of my track uh, that are currently doing the A&E placement. And basically what we do in that two hour session is we just talk about the experiences we've had on clinical placement. It is a professional setting, so it's not just a chit chat, it's basically an opportunity to better understand your experiences that you've seen. Um, and obviously being on an A&E placement, I've seen a huge, huge amount of real like an amazing amount. Like I cannot explain to you how much I see on each placement. But after that, um, that's two hours. That's from 9.30 till 11.30. And then at 12 till eight, I'm in the A&E ED department doing my clinical placement. So that'll involve me doing loads of cannulas, bloods, ECGs, capillary glucose, peak flows, hopefully administer oxygen and all of the other things because there's so much going on in A&E. You're gonna see so many patients, so many opportunities to take histories, do exams, like I feel so prepared now. Like I cannot explain, three weeks ago when I first started this placement, I felt completely out of my depth because I've just taken a full summer holidays off medicine, but only having done three weeks, speaking to patients, every other day basically on these clinical placements taking histories i feel so comfortable now in that environment i absolutely love it i need to have breakfast though i don't particularly love these early starts i know most people watching this are probably going to think nine o'clock well, that's not an early start mate when I get to the ED, it's just so worth it at the end of the day because it's such an amazing experience. And every single shift I've been on time just flies by. And it's almost as if at the end of the shift, I don't even wanna leave because I get so many opportunities to do things, to learn new skills, to shadow incredible doctors that are so, so good at teaching. Like, I just go into the ED and I just make a point of like, I'm a student, can I help anyone? Can I do some cannulas? Can I speak to anyone? Have you, have you got any interest in patients? I'll say that to any of the doctors that I can see. And then they'll be like, sure, go and pick up so-and-so from the waiting room um, and tell me what you find. So then basically I'll just go out to the waiting room, call someone, find a room, do a whole consultation, full history, full examination that I think is relevant, listen to the chest, listen to the heart, do whatever else, come back, present it to the doctor, and then most often than not, they'll be like, what's your differential? And then that'll give me an opportunity to start thinking more clinically, start thinking about what I believe the person has. So we'll start putting together a few differentials, and then often, the doctor will just go back in and just clarify one or two things and then we'll come back out and make a plan for the person. So that's how cool it is. So many things going on in the A&E department and it's really, really exciting. It's definitely opened my mind up to that kind of medicine. If you just have a look at all the upsers that I've signed off, on this placement. I signed off six in my first like two shifts, but you can see there out of 10 upsers, I've signed off eight and I've done many of them multiple times. I've done cannulations probably over 10 times. I've done venue punctures about 10 times. And that's just because I wanna get down and dirty. I wanna get involved. I wanna really practice these skills. And there's no better way of doing it in A&E because everybody needs cannulas putting in. But yeah, if you get an A&E placement, you should be so grateful. 
I'm just annoyed that ICL, which is the introductory clinical placement block that we have, which is the first block, is only a four week period and it's formative. But every other block, blocks one to four for the rest of the year will be five weeks. But actually it's worked in my favor because I think having doing, done my first clinical placement of year three in A&E, it has really thrown me into the deep end. I've seen so much over this last three weeks and I personally feel so, so experienced now in this line of work in medicine and in taking histories and examinations, which are the main, most important components of year three. Anyway, I'm gonna eat this breakfast because I need to cycle over to the hospital, which is gonna take me about 10 minutes to talk to the rest of my group about my experiences this week. So excited. Okay, not good, not a good start to the day, it's 20 past. It's gonna take me 10 minutes to cycle there, so. Good start to the day. <laughs> so I have just finished my clinical night session with the GP this week, which was amazing. But today it basically was typical to our usual sessions whereby the clinical lead that runs the session basically asked us, you know, any interesting experiences on clinical placement, any things that you're concerned about. And it was just basically an open discussion about how we've been finding it. I've noticed that you, pretty unanimously everyone in our track absolutely loves A&E. The only bit of negative feedback that some people are saying is they don't like the fact that in A&E you tend to find that you're not there throughout the whole patient journey because often you get people that are either critically unwell and you've got to refer them on once you've done your investigation or it will be something that's quite minor and then you'll just send them on their way so maybe you're not there the whole way and some people have mixed opinions on that but yeah really really good session because today we um, basically unpacked my case it was a young man that came in with a PR bleed two days ago and essentially it was about really unpacking the kind of questions that I asked and the GP asked, well, why did you ask that? What are the differentials that you're thinking about? And we basically discussed with the GP why it might be this, why it might not be this, and why it might be that. Thank you very much. Uh, this part is a raw beef, this, this one is a cooked beef. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very and much. You can add, uh, Wicked. What you can Cheers, man. For lunch, I have come to a Vietnamese place. I've got some pho. And um, I've basically got about 20 minutes until my placement actually starts. To be honest, anything beats the sandwiches that I just keep making myself every day. There's only so many sandwiches you can do on clinical placements throughout the week. But yeah, as I say, it was about just unpacking the kind of questions that I asked about his social history, his family history. Does he smoke? Does he drink? But it was just really great to fill in any gaps because on the placement in A&E, sometimes you don't have the opportunity to ask all the questions that you want to ask. So that's the purpose of clinical debrief. And it's definitely amazing the fact that today we actually had a GP that was helping us better understand everything rather than a nurse. But as I say, I'm gonna enjoy this and then head over to the hospital. That was so good. Those noodles, unreal. Time for an eight hour shift in A&E. So it is 5.30 and I've just left placement to come to Starbucks to get an overpriced kombucha, three quid. Uh, very, very fun day today so far. Um, seeing a lot of interest in patients. I've administered oxygen, so I have now signed off nine out of my 10 oxes. So really, really happy with that. But also it was actually really fun having a chat with a young lad who had fainted following having a cannulation because I learned a lot about the difference between seizures and potentially vasovagal syncope, which is a cardiac issue because there was a lot of relevant questions that I didn't necessarily think of to ask the patient, such as the pre, during and after the point at which he passed out. But basically we ruled all that out and it turned out that it was a cardiac situation and potentially just vasovagal, which meant he was really stressed out and really uncomfortable by the sight of a cannula. 
or a needle and he just discovered that he's got a phobia of needles in the process so we just discharged him and you know that was a really interesting task in, in itself and then after that we just had a uh, from four to five we just had an hour teaching session on chest x-rays and asthma so yeah lots of good fun learning lots and about to head back on to placement to potentially learn a hell of a lot more the longest day it's now nine o'clock supposed to finish at eight o'clock long long day a lot's happened i need to get home I need to get back and just got back from a really really long day did lots this evening but where do i start so yeah spoke to some more patients as per usual going straight out of the teaching session so it's one guy that had inhaled liquid nitrogen and he was short of breath, had some chest pain after that, but it was quite a rapid discharge for him. What I'm starting to realize in A&E is it's very much a case of identifying the people that are really acutely unwell. And if they are like, in a really bad situation and trying to avoid it getting worse for them. So a lot of people that end up waiting for a very long period of time, obviously they're low down the priority list. And to be honest, it is a case of just sifting through the people that really, really need the help immediately. a and is so exciting. There's so many different things happening all at once. Basically, I went into the resource area, which is the, uh, thank you for the light, sweetheart. That's good. That's better. Anyway, I went in and there was six police officers restraining one guy who apparently had been completely under the influence of multiple different drugs. He had been attacking people and attacking police officers. So I witnessed that and I was quite overwhelmed by the pressure that the consultants were under, dealing with trying to cannulate this guy and put drugs in him and lorazepam to try and calm him down because this guy was really erratic. Um, yeah, it really showed me how diverse the job can be in A&E, considering, you know, 20 minutes before that, I was just having a conversation with a guy about inhaling liquid nitrogen gas. So that was mental. But yeah, it's a, it's a really crazy environment. And it's somewhat difficult as well, because being in an environment like that, where there is obviously people undergoing a lot of stress, you know, consultants going through a lot, doctors going through a lot, and you are a medical student and you do sometimes just feel like a, a part that's just in the way. Sometimes it does feel a bit like you are in the way and sometimes people can bark demands that you will get that, get this or move out the way. And I can't help but sometimes feel like it bothers me sometimes. And I get it. I get that people are stressed and I get that consultants are overworked and they're dealing with way more than I can ever imagine. And it is only right that they say, move out the way rather than please could you move out the way because why would they say please can you move out the way it's not efficient enough and these guys have to be incredibly efficient but it does sometimes take its toll on you having a full day of being told do this do that or just move out the way and you do feel like you are very inferior and it is quite difficult especially when you're you know a lot older like i'm nearly 30 right i'm 28 and it does sometimes feel difficult when people your age sometimes or someone just a little bit older than you or a consultant just tells you do this or don't do that and it just feels like um but yeah anyway Regardless of that, I still have very fond feelings about this placement and this experience, and it has been absolutely unbelievably incredible. That's what Jenny says. I think that means we're gonna go and get some food now, is that right? Yes. Where are we going? I want to go to um, that little chicken place that we used to go to when you lived at Peter. <laughs> We are back at the flat. But where are we, Jennifer? We're in the parcel collection area. And why is that? Matthew has a problem. He's a compulsive shopper. If you guys have been watching my channel for long enough, you'll know that I love receiving a good parcel. Back when I was living in Vita, parcel, parcel, parcel every week. But anyway, guys, I'm back now. And I think that is where I'm going to wrap up today's video. Food was amazing. Today was amazing. It's five past 12 and I've got to do it all again tomorrow. So if you have enjoyed this day in my life as a third year medical student, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and also the bell notification button to see more from me and what I get up to on a daily basis, a weekly basis as a medical student. So see you guys in the next one.